Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to emulate PSP games on your Windows machine. If you're interested on other platforms, don't worry, I've got a video covering that as well. So to do it on PC, it is really, really simple. So you just want to open up your web browser, Google PP, FSPP. This is the emulator. This is not the official emulator because, you know, none of them are, you know, obviously a but this is the main emulator and it has loads of support it's getting updated on a constant basis and as you can see these are the platforms that it supports which is literally pretty much any platform you're you know going to need so if you just go to the website i'll provide links to everything there's two versions you can download is the regular one and the gold one the gold one you have to buy it and if you click on it you can actually see the differences it's mainly to do with a couple of extra things regarding performance and save states but honestly even the free version is fantastic they've done an amazing job i think the best reason to buy the gold version is to support the team because they ultimately do this for free so if you want to buy the gold version that is a great thing to do so if we go to the i think the home page yeah this is the home page click download and go to PPSSPP for Windows. There's two versions you can download a zip file, which you'll extract and there'll be an executable in there. So that's basically a portable version. And then there's an installer version. I'm going to download the zip version. The installer version, once you've installed it, so you'll get an executable from this and an installable file. Open that up, just go through the steps of installing it on your hard drive. And that's it. Once you open it, it's the exact same process. So I'm going to go for this version, just click that, it starts downloading it. I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it downloaded, but you don't need to cancel it. And I'm going to show you how to get any game for free. And uh, so if you go to romsmode.com and let's go to romsmode.com, romsmode.com, go to roms. And the one we want is the PlayStation Portable. Right there, and you can search for the game. So let's think what game. Oh, yeah, Coded. I'm going to search for it earlier on. It's one of my favorite games. Uh, it was fantastic. If, you haven't, if, ne if you've never played it, highly recommend checking this out. It's a first person shooter. Just a little disclaimer this video is not condoning piracy, though I am showing you how to emulate games on your PC. And I'm showing you where you can get any of them for free. This is on the assumption that you own the original game for that particular region. All the games that I have, I own the original version as well. So again, just a little disclaimer, this is not condoning piracy. So once we, you know, we've got a game, which will be in the form of an ISO file or even a .CSO, then what we need to do is go to the folder where we downloaded our... PPSSPP. If you have the executable, just install it and you can simply skip the step until we open it up. I just want to extract this. So, right click, extract all, click extract. This shouldn't take long at all because it's not very big and not many files. And then, inside of here, well, I've got a folder called PSP Games. This is where my games are. So, I've just got Medal of Honor Heroes 1 and 2, and I've got God of War Ghost of Sparta. So, if we go to PPSSPP and go win, launch the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version recommend 64-bit on, unless you're on an old enough computer where your operating system is 32-bit highly unlikely though so if you just click enter or double click it it will launch up the emulator and that is it so what i want to show you is we've got some settings here you can go full screen you can enable vsync you know on and off which is great you can change the post processing shader so you can add some anti-aliasing you can change the resolution this is great this is a great thing about emulating a a pretty low end platform old platform game is that you can apply all these crazy post tweaks regarding the shader regarding the resolution the texture you know scaling all of this stuff and you know a modest computer will be able to handle it whereas if you try to do this on like a ps3 emulator it's going to be a lot more difficult because it's still a very new you know relatively high-end system you can you know show frame per second count you can enable cheats this you know sound by default is enabled etc if you go to more settings you can change if you really want to the back end rendering i'm leaving a vulcan that's a fantastic renderer 
and you can go to audio you can go to controls so you can map the controls yourself for obviously these are the you know what they look like and the k b d is the keyboard control so x on the keyboard is z circle is x and it says x360 because you know you could use an xbox 360 controller i have an xbox one controller connected which is essentially the same thing in terms of button mapping so it allows me to play it you can connect a ps4 controller ps3 controller that's totally up to you if we go back uh, again, there are some other settings you can change, but I recommend leaving everything as default unless you absolutely know what you're doing. You can go to save data management as well. So if we just go back here, we can navigate to where our games are. So we could open a directory or open up it like this or, you know, just click load. But if we if we know what drive it's on, mine's on the E drive, it's in Chrome. It's in PSP games, and there we go. All three games that I had there. So if I was to go to Medal of Honor Heroes 2, as you, can hear, you can hear the audio. You can see it's very smooth. I'm going to just turn the audio down a second so you can hear me talking. And if you double click anywhere on the screen, it maximizes it. And we just got this option saying, use an autosave feature, I'm gonna click X. Auto save is now enabled. So I'm just using my Xbox One controller. And as you can see, I can you know, launch it up. So I just want to get into the game, show you a couple of things. And apart from that, that's it. We're all set up. You can you know use any game you want. The compatibility is great. I think it's pretty much 100% compatible with all games. So I can move it. So on my Xbox controller, I'm using the left stick to move. I'm trying to use the right analog stick. That is not working. I have to use the face buttons, the Y, the X, the B, and the A, or if you're on the PlayStation controller, it'd be the triangle, the square, the circle, and the X buttons. And that is because the original PSP, or the PSP, only had one analog stick, and you had to use, in game like this, the face button. So if you want to essentially, you know, apply the the right analog stick you can you know you can go down here so if we go to analog up left as you can see this is mapped like so if we want to essentially do something similar for the d-pad so if we want to do d-pad not the d-pad no we wanted we want the face button so it would be the we want the triangle so yeah, triangle is the equivalent of Y on my, but maybe I want it to move up. So this is moving up now. So square is, well, X. So moving the, the right analog stick left. X should be down and this should be right. And if I click back and I click, and I, I'll leave you at this resolution. And obviously I can't control this anymore, so I'm gonna to need to use the analog stick for this. But now in the game, I'm actually using the analog stick for the first time ever playing Medal of Honor Heroes on you know a PSP or a PSP emulator to essentially be able to move it. And it's a lot better than using the face buttons. Obviously, I can tweak the sensitivity in the settings. But it's a lot easier for me to aim and hit the enemies, you know, as bef like before it was really, really annoying. So this is not only does it bring life into some old classic games, it also, I'm literally about to die. It also allows you to modify the controllers, the settings in a way that is more comfortable to you. And if you ever want to change it back, you can go to control mapping restore defaults and if we go back as you can see these have been now reset and that is it that's all i wanted to do to show you how to set up the PPSS PP emulator on windows so you can emulate playstation portable games if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video